Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Austin Cummings, and I am joined by the irreplaceable Danny Tortelli. That's me. Hi. And Matthew Schultz. As always, a and stay healthy out there. Do your ring fit no more than four hours today, a day like me. You know, that's enough. Do your ring fit. When um, we come out of this quarantine, you'll be ripped. Oh, yeah, that's true. Worth it. That's my big shot, boys. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about a rumor that came out today. This rumor, Danny, why don't you hit us with that headline? All right, so the first, a couple uh, outlets reported this, but the very first one was the outlet VGC. Do either of y'all remember what they stand for? I think it's a direct competitor to ANP. Yes, yes. Sure. That, I mean, you know, that's end of the alphabet. Um, so they were the first to report that um, for Mario's 35th anniversary, um, soon, sometime, may even be their uh, planned and now delayed um uh, uh, what's called E3 announcement was going to be all of the Mario games are going to be remastered or re-released at least, but the most recent ones ever since 64, so Galaxy Sunshine 64, um, will be in one special anniversary collection, um, remastered, re-something, revisited. Um, 3D World will also have its own remaster uh, release. Um, yeah, so there will be some new old Mario coming out. Um, <laughs> boys, let me let me jump in here and ask you a question. Yeah. Mario turning 35. Feel old yet? Am I right? Ha <laughs> ha. Makes you think, huh? Only 90s kids will, will know that feeling. <laughs> or 80s. Um, yes. I, yeah, big a big rumor. We've been talking a long time about, I think there's been a lot of clamoring, especially for Sunshine. Mm. Because it is so trapped back on an unsuccessful console. There at the end. I do feel like, yeah, 3D World almost is the last holdout as far as a Wii U game that is not on the Switch yet. We even, you know, got Tokyo mm. Mirage Sessions Sharp FE Encore. I do get, I do get paid a whole uh, a whole nickel through Amazon affiliate uh, <laughs> recommendation if I'm able to say that full name. Hit him in the as link well below. As, uh, new Super Mario Brothers Deluxe Wii U Extravaganza. But Switch I feel edition. like most of these Switch Edition. Thank you. Most of these ports have made it now, and this really is the last one being 3D World. So um, just to kind of recap on that, the the big news is a rumor of a remaster of Super Mario 64 from the N64, as then Super Mario Sunshine, the GameCube game, which this will be the first time it will have appeared on anything besides its original GameCube release. And then Super Mario Galaxy, the 2007 Wii game which did appear on Virtual Console on the Wii U. Um, so yeah. the, there leaves a lot of questions here. Let me just start, start off with uh, initial... Have you guys played all three of those? Galaxy, definitely the best. It's just like an objective question. It, Galaxy is the best, and if any other answer, I'm afraid, is fake gamer. And if you answer here uh, Super Mario 64 DS as your favorite of them, or you play as Yoshi wearing a Mario hat that turns into Mario, which really was like the, the precursor. We, we should have seen that as like that is a Peachette prototype years before that whole controversy started. You know, that was like the flare that went up and no one batted an eye that Yoshi could wear a man's hat and turn into a full human and impersonate him. And that in that rendition of Super Mario 64. And Odyssey, a full T-Rex can wear Mario's hat. Mm hmm. Yeah. What are they going to do next? Huh? I wanted to kind of touch on that. So the looking at Nintendo's history, uh, if we kind of go go back and see what kind of precedent do we have for multiple package uh, collections and what can we kind of use to infer? So if we go with the assumption that these games are coming out, how might they be delivered? And then, so I just did a quick, a quick search to pull up a few articles, largely just based on my recollection for these things. And I've gotten, um, I have four examples of times when Nintendo themselves have put out a collection of Nintendo first-party games on one of their platforms. So the first and most uh, famous, I suppose, of all these would be the Super Mario All-Stars collection back on the Super Nintendo. This was a collection that came out in 1993, and it was the original 
of Super Mario Brothers. They lost levels, which Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan, Super Mario Brothers 2, as we know it, and Super Mario Brothers 3 that were all moved on the SNES. It was a single cartridge game. They, all those games were touched up visually quite significantly up to a standard more resembling that of Super Mario World, uh, the SNES game. It sold very well. It would eventually get a reissue for a Wii release um, years later. And it also had like some fun little touches where it would like change some of the item blocks and things to uh, make it like a special, a special edition uh, scenario. It was like a, a significant visual upgrade. Very cool. The other collections, do either of you have one that comes to the top of your head? Or um, Mac, can you think of? Yeah. So this news about these Mario bundles, super intriguing, very interesting. Um, some of my favorite Nintendo collections, I guess, have included um, the you know Ocarina of Time and uh, Majora's Mask um, kind of remix when the for the GameCube collection. So the way when, it worked uh, was if you pre-ordered. Yeah, if you pre-ordered Wind Waker, there was a dual one that was Ocarina of Time and Master Mode for Master Quest. But then later, if you subscribed to Nintendo Power or bought one of like the special Game Cubes at the time, it came with a collection disc that had like Ocarina, Majora, Zelda 2, Legend of Zelda, maybe Link to the Past. They weren't. It was like a um, maybe not the best ports of all those games. They were not touched up visually uh, more than just being on the GameCube, you know, format and running it for ADI. Uh, but the they were collected, so that is another example. And that one was, you know, essentially free, um, and an amazing collection at a time where there was not a virtual console, nor was there a way to play in sixty four games. And Majora's Mask was not that old a game, uh, mm-hmm. you know. And this is late in the GameCube era, so the order that one's pretty um, amazing. Also, the Metroid Prime uh, collection. Um, but yeah, this would be really interesting. I certainly would buy a Mario collection with 64, uh, you know, Super Mario Sunshine alone would be a selling point for me. And of course, Galaxy, which I feel, I know Austin agrees, is the, like, probably the best uh, of, of those three games Pretty there. True. But uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy, as you mentioned, which uh, was a compilation on the Wii that came out August 24th, 2009, was Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3 first two of those games on the GameCube and then the third on the Wii. And though visually the game did have a widescreen mode, so that was um, a step up. The coolest thing was they could all be played with the Wii remote, which was a big uh, advantage over the GameCube port because in the GameCube game, because the GameCube controller did not really have two analog sticks because the C stick didn't really count as a second analog stick. And thus in that game, you had to hold down the right shoulder button to like stop and then look around and aim, and then fire with A. So the ability to move and also look in all directions at the same time, although that was not a big advent or anything in 2009. Uh, Twin-stick first-person shooters had been doing it for uh, since Halo 1 at that point, or even kind of GoldenEye. The, in the case of Metroid, it was a big change, and those are another example of three games in a single collection. The last most recent one I can think of is that Kirby did get like various collections of some of the classic games. Um, there was, in 2012, there was the Kirby Dream Collection on the Wii. So it was a very, very tail end of the Wii. Slash Wii was right right there too. Um, that had Kirby's Dreamland Adventure, Dreamland 2, Superstar, Dreamland 3, and Crystal Shards, which is a lot of game um, overall. But so Nintendo does have a precedent for doing this. Mm-hmm. But this is what I want to uh, say. Having now reviewed our history, as any good, well-researched, uh, Patreon-worthy podcast would do. But the <laughs> thing that kind of makes you wonder is, let's take a more recent look at Nintendo. Just in 2019, we got a Link, uh, Link's Awakening you know, remade, and it was a full remake, and a huge visual upgrade, yep. of course, over the original Game Boy game. But it was also basically just that, in a dungeon mode that nobody used, and it was $60. Mm-hmm. You know, and then... Back on the Wii U, we had the HD remaster of Wind Waker, which was visually a big step up and had a lot of cool new features and definitive way to play that game. But it was $60. And we also got Twilight Princess, which was a much more subtle upgrade from the Wii version and uh, not in an in-house Nintendo project. That looked fine on the Wii U. And it was also a full price game with the Wolf Link at Midna Amiibo. Mm. But, uh, overall like not a 
not a tremendous value. Uh, so it does make you wonder, if we go by this report being true, this collection then would be 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy. No mm-hmm. Galaxy 2, which is very strange. Um, and that is the better of the two Galaxy games because it does have the Yoshi mechanics and uh, just kind of more interesting bonus levels. But, uh, okay, so if we have these three games on it, Danny, do you think they would receive any like remaster as far as are they just going to be at a higher resolution, which is a given, I suppose, mm-hmm. or is it going to be like a full remake where they're going to go back and you know update all these art assets yeah. and make it look something that more resembles a contemporary game? What's your prediction on it? So with any of the N64 games, I've gone back and forth on this a lot because I'm like, do people mm-hmm. just love that so much because it was the first 3D game? Or sure. like, you know, whether it was 64 or Ocarina of Time, like, would people accept it if it got the full Link's Awakening, like, redone art style from scratch? Um, mm-hmm. Or would people be like, no, just up the resolution and fix the camera problems and I'll take the original game as is? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think I would be happy, depending on the price, <laughs> I would be happy with either. Um, mm-hmm. I would definitely want the camera solutions fixed for all the above. I'm hoping that's something they use that second joystick now. They're like, okay, we can figure that out. Um, Sunshine, I feel, is going to be a a more moderate upgrade just because those graphics were so much better than the N64 era already. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that's going to be mostly a touch-up for sure, one way or another. I don't think they're going to do some heavy lifting as far as the visuals go for Sunshine. Yeah, that one needs camera work. It's a lot, yeah. Um, I I go back and forth on if they actually will do a full-fledged redux of 64 visually. 64 is definitely the outlier. I think that's great because Galaxy already looks so good. Yeah, I will say that, especially if you go back and rewatch the cinematics for Sunshine, they're very awkward. Like, I remember being really struck by it because Sunshine had this narrative. And I think especially as like a younger gamer, I was drawn to the idea of like, oh, these are, you know, it's a storytelling medium, which is definitely true. Yeah. But I think I probably prioritize that uh, high as far as like interests and so for sunshine the like the fact that it had this little story where mario is falsely accused of vandalism and his vacation is ruined and he has to work out a prison sentence i guess on Um, but I don't, I'm, I have no idea. I have no idea what kind of ports these are going to be. I imagine they're just going to give it to a studio of theirs, and they're going to uh, kind of make it look nice, uh, look good in a 720 uh, screen resolution on their uh, handheld mode on the Switch. Um, and yeah, I, I, I expect that you know it should just be kind of updates to not just the graphics, but you know also the kind of the Maybe the user interface, the, you know, everything from the menus, the camera work, um, maybe throw in a couple of special features or additions for the, you know, that are going to be unique to this Switch collection. Other than that, though, um, I'm not sure what else they're going to do. It's weird that, you know, Galaxy 2 is not going to have or or appear in this. Because I think none of them are going to be a substantial enough upgrade that they have confidence in it. So I think, I think, I think there's probably like a critical threshold for each one, and it's like yeah. once, as long as they remain under it, then they're comfortable putting it in like a collection, right? Once yeah. it surpasses, I'm sure that there's a monetary threshold, but sure. also just like from a visual fidelity and attention standpoint, like I don't think they would want a third party studio um, to do too much like i'm I'm sure super mario 64 is their baby by many respects so i think they want someone to touch it up and make sure it runs and it's compatible port you know technically speaking that it runs what if they because have you guys played halo 2 anniversary edition Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i have so you know how you can between the original animation and or or like visuals and the what if they did something like that for (laughs) mario 64 so like there is something super pretty and new and then you just press like I don't know. Um, right. And that is yeah. a good example. Of course, it's Microsoft, but a good example of like a collection where they just focused their remake efforts really on a single game, right? Halo like the 3 big and hit. Master Chief yeah. Collection is not touched. Halo had yeah, already really been all, yeah. touched up. Like, 
the original game had been touched up previously in the uh, Halo Combat Evolved <laughs> remaster that had come out on 360. Yeah. But they just took that, put it in here. Halo 2 had a huge visual update as well as the cutscenes were fantastic. The uh, But then ODST and Reach, which came out for it later, neither one received more than a resolution upgrade. Right, um, yeah. So they could do a situation where 64 is like a lot sharper, but then Sunshine and Galaxy are really just more of a resolution bump. But isn't it weird then to put 3D World out? Like, because you know that game will be 60 bucks. So they're just going to do it like normal, but it's just like, it should not be... I bought New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe um, for Switch, so whatever. I'm part of the problem, but like the, <laughs> um, but even that, it's like that is a game that would be great for forty dollars. We were talking about this last week with uh, reacting to the mini direct. Like they would be wise to put some like a link to the past would have been also great at forty dollars. Like it's kind of a, a harder bargain at sixty. Like the, um, it makes you wonder a little bit. Like three D World would definitely just be sixty bucks. They'll put Deluxe on the name. And maybe they'll put in, like, just like in Captain Toad, when it came to the Switch, also for $60, I believe. The um, When that came, it, like, had some new Donk City levels and stuff. You know, maybe they'll use art assets and do something similar for 3D World. But still, it's going to be 3D World, which is a fantastic game. But, um, yeah, you it seems so inconsistent to have that at 60 bucks, And then have Galaxy, which ultimately is a better game than 3D World. And, although it's only single player. Um, Galaxy, Sunshine, and 64 all in a package for also 60. It's, so you think all strange. three will go for 60, or do you think it'll be like 70 or 80? No, for I all think, three? I think the, no, they won't, no one's going to break 60 ever until the industry Ooh. does. So I think it'll be for wow. three, yes. And then separately, 59.99 for 64, including, yeah, Sunshine and Galaxy, just so I'm clear. And then it'll be $60 separately for 3D World, which will be, a, which is a ripoff, even though it's a fantastic game, but it like by the standards of it's a game that did come out six or so years ago. So my question is though, a lot of these successes, right, taken on their own could just be like, oh, Nintendo makes great games, but they've all coalesced to be like, Nintendo gets it, is the feeling, even though like online still sucks and yada yada. But okay, Paper Mario is almost like the best test case to figure out like where is Nintendo's like leadership and like creative decision making? Is it truly as enlightened as we would like it to be? Because just as a little background, Paper Mario, the original N64, great. Thousand Year Door is like very revered and is the best entry in the series. Partly it's revered like Sunshine, I think, because it is a GameCube game that is locked to that console. So people have this like, you know, you can say it's amazing and no one can really call your bluff because it's impossible to play. And also like it makes it all the more elusive and cool uh, is my feeling. Super Paper Mario was great on the Wii, but it was more of a platformer game with RPG elements, but a lot of humor. And then post that time though, we got Sticker Star on 3DS which was bad. And it had, even though it's really cute, it's like, it has the same problem with the later Alpha Dream Mario and Luigi games in that, like myself, they're way too chatty and just tons of tutorials. And like the battle system's not that fun. And it's like, it, it seems geared towards like a really young audience that also can read a ton. It's like a very strange mix of just like constant dialogue and a very simple battle system. And then Color Splash looks phenomenal on Wii U. And frankly, I would like to play it because I, I passed on it. But it, it basically has the same issues as Sticker Star does, which is like, it looks good. It is Paper Mario, but it has a battle system that people do not want. So if they come out with it now, what they should do out of all these games is to put like Thousand Year Door out again, like as an HD thing and make it a reasonable price or do a Paper Mario collection I mean, or something. Especially Thousand Year Door being on the GameCube. Um, just another one of those amazing titles that uh, the GameCube was known for um, and still currently only playable on the GameCube. Um, we'd love to see that show up. And I know there's been rumors about a new Nintendo um, Paper Mario game. And I kind of say, I, I trust Nintendo. If the rumors are saying that it, it, it could be true to form um, or return to form, I should say, then 
then yeah, I think that with you know with Zelda and Mario and even Animal Crossing and and hopefully one day Mario Kart, though not so much Mario Party, um, I would love to see them kind of come back to the formula that made Paper Mario great, which was just a much more authentic RPG experience with you know all the cute art style and um, dialogue of of all the, that all the games have. Because those games would be much easier to update. Because a lot of that would be largely resolution, you know, mm. um, and you don't have to worry about the camera controls and all those types of things. Um, you do have some control issues if you put like Super Paper Mario on there because you do the Wii remote and multiple pulling in different orientations. But that would be easy, and people really want that. I worry that a new Paper Mario. I want to know from both of you: is it going to be a return to form or another like bad experiment? So could they put all the Paper Marios in a bundle? I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I want my serious, mature, gritty, dark, adult Paper Mario. I want him mm-hmm, out there doing mm-hmm. 2D jokes. That's it. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> I do think, I appreciate that optimism. I think myself, I'm a little skeptical. I think they goof it up somehow. But I would love to be proven wrong. I just feel, in one more Mario game, I would love to see a remaster or just to appear on SNES Online, which has not gotten like a, a like much of in the way of updates on these games, um, or updates as far as the service. I would love Super Mario RPG, which is right now a, a reasonably challenging game to play, unless you have an SNES Classic, um, you know, or you had it on Virtual Console back on the Wii. And that is a game that was the template for A. It's made by Square. That's very cool. There are tons of characters on there. People have been clamoring for like Geno uh, and Smash, right? And that would be, we know the ARMS character is happening. So wouldn't it be cool to have like another Nintendo character in the way of Geno, the Square Nintendo character, appear? I mean, you know, put that game on the service. But, um, you know, I hope if they do the 35th anniversary, we might get some weirdo Mario, uh, Mario hits, such as. Mario DDR on the GameCube. Where's that, you know? Here we go, off the rails. Don't you know it's time to, to, to wrap To wrap it all up, like Danny, I, Super Mario 3D World re- remake or remaster, down or clown? Yeah, I'd love to play that game for the first time. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. What about the collection? Down. Oh, that I mean, uh, Galaxy I never played, but for Sunshine 64 alone, I'm down. Yeah, I love those games, but I don't need to play them, play 3D World again, and I don't want to play 64. Now, one last thought: you guys like three and one for that combo? Let me uh, let me entice you to this deal. It's 51 clubhouse games, and it's 39.99. We got solitaire. We got billiards. We got also pool. Oh yes, you got bowling again. You got boxing again. Yeah. My favorite clubhouse game, boxing. Okay, boys and fan, thank you so much for joining us on another Nintendo podcast, where you can find us each and every episode on the YouTube or listen to four free episodes on the podcast. Um, and or uh, if you enjoy the show, send some money to my personal PayPal. In any event, this was Austin Cummings and... And Danny Tortelli. And... Gris. Very good. And until next time, stay safe out there.